Yo, folks, what's going on? Thought I'd get back into the lab right here, man. I've been straight labbing your man, Coley, and I will continue to do that uh, for the foreseeable future. Obviously, I need to jump back into some more stuff with recruiting and everything like this, but I thought I would hit this bad boy up before I took a break. I want to talk about his ability to get the running backs out um, in space um, and pretty much targeting the running backs in general. In general, You know that Georgia is the absolute truth when you think about guys like Swift and Cook. Uh, because both of, those, both of those guys are some of the best running back receivers that I've seen. And Coley has a million different ways to get, get these boys the ball. And I actually talked to Coley. Uh, we chopped it up and talked about some of his concepts. So I'll have that in a later post um, sometime in the near future. But, man, check some of this stuff out right here. Now, don't what I tell you in film study, never look at the results. Only look at the conceptual uh, nature of the play. So you'll have right here. It's going to be keeping in line with the zone flow uh, from the from the um, offensive lineman. You're going to have a what looks to be a counter from the fullback, who's actually normal halfback Joe Yearby, the backup halfback. He's going to give you some counter action and get out here towards the flat. You'll have your re regular what would look like to be a kind of a stretch run by your running back here, maybe Gus Edwards or Duke Johnson, one of those guys like there. You're going to have a boot open here from the quarterback. So he's going to come down there to the to the running back, and then he's going to boot out the side right there. So this is a pretty good concept because it's also a build, and I'll show you that on the very next play. All right, we'll see when going here. You see the boot open. Now, look, that just looks like your regular stretch play, right? Show him it. Now watch your man right here get down to the flat. Now understand this: you put Yearby at fullback, and he has fullback speed. He's one of the slowest running backs I've ever seen. He's like Najee Harris slow. All right, boom, hit that bad boy out. So imagine that right there is Swift. If you had Swift at fullback, you had James Cook at tailback. You get Swift the ball right here with Jake Fromm throwing on the ball, probably a little bit um, better out in front of him or something like that. Look at all this green grass right here. That's just manufacturing. That's on a first down play, too. So I know you guys like that, man, because we don't like all that running on first down. So they're there, man. There you go, man. Get your playmakers out in space. But obviously, Joe Yerby didn't do anything with it. All right, very similar concept right here, but here's, here's the bill to get a very big explosive play. So you give the defense looks um, out of different personnel with the same type of play or a different play out of the same type of personnel um, for you guys out there who like to try to scheme it up all the time. You know what I mean? Not everything has to be about scheme. Sometimes you have to be able to just line up and just whip people's asses, even if they know what you're going to do. That's football to me right there. Football is when I knew what somebody was going to do and I still could not stop them on the defensive side of the ball. That was demoralizing. Some people trying to do some razzle-dazzle type stuff, that ain't nothing to me. You know what I mean? That can be stopped the next time. But when you can line up every time and bust somebody's ass and they can't stop it, that's scary. All right, so check this out. Same thing right here. You're going to have – so this was Duke Johnson. So you have Duke Johnson right here. What he's going to do is take the same um, approach right here, like it's a stretch play, and you're going to see the boot open up from the quarterback, the, uh, the boot uh, action there. But instead of just going right here, he's actually going to – continue to go and he's going to get wheeled up the field right you're going to have the fullback right here carter an actual true fullback didn't last time they had your lined up here um the, a running back so he's going to do the same counter action and then he's coming back this way in the flats notice this is 22 personnel two backs two tight ends uh you got stan dobar right here um i believe he's just going to kind of trail the play but you have uh what probably is going to be Clive Walford, I would have to imagine, as the um, normal tight end in the game. He's going to run a shallow cross. So this gives your man options because he's going to come right here on the stretch, boot back over, and kind of plant right here. And he kind of hit my man right here in this, in, um, on the shallow crosser. And I believe there's a receiver maybe running a, a depth, running at depth there. So kind of a levels concept. But look what happens and look what he does. All right, boom, look at that. So if you've been running stretch all day like Miami love to do, that's going to get everyone's attention. You can see everyone right here playing attention to this play action right here, stretch city. All right, coming back. So look, he's got options there, levels. 
You can hit Clive Walford coming through right here in this um, shallow area, and you can see where he's looking right now. There's definitely a deep receiver running this way, but look what he actually does. Plants, buy some time, hit the running back on a deep-ass wheel route, almost scored, almost scored. Come on now. Your man DeAndre Swift, 10 times faster than Duke Johnson. Uh, imagine him going out there, or even a James Cook, somebody like these these boys with this type of speed and these type of hands. Uh, no disrespect to uh, Duke Johnson. He's an NFL um, running back, obviously, for the Cleveland Browns. But speed is not his thing. He's very he's more quicker than fast, and he's got a little bit of power to him as well. But just imagine that with your guys. This is one of my favorite plays, uh, and I think it's a very underutilized play. The Falcons used to kill this. So this is a play that comes out of the West Coast playbook. It's just a halfback angle route. Um, you'll be able to isolate uh, weak side linebackers or whomever they send over there. Usually it's a weak side play because you want to get that space there. So you'll have your man right here, probably Duke Johnson, I would imagine, come in right here. And then he kind of has a choice to kind of either, either keep it upfield or bang that bad boy at an angle right here, almost a 90-degree angle. I believe he'll get matched up on the weak side linebacker right here. All right. See it coming out right here. Yep. So it's man to man coverage right there. Um, you put man to man coverage on somebody as freaky as James Cook or DeAndre Swift. Um, or maybe even Zamir White. We see him have a little bit of success like that in high school. We know he can catch the ball, but those two in general, just because of the, their abilities to perhaps be receivers and be that good, that's why it's scary to me. Boom. Stick that foot in the ground, spin them like a ceiling fan. But look. Bad pass. <laughs> so uh, just imagine that. Don't look at the results. Imagine that with your personnel. Here's another iteration of that angle route right there. You see him once again matched up. Uh, running back. I mean, the linebacker has the running back one-on-one. -on -one. Good luck with that. Boom, stick that foot in the ground. Show the numbers. There you go. Move the chains. A bit different. Uh, Coach Coley told me they called it bullets. It's kind of a, a seam transition. So you'll have the running back right here. Instead of running an angle, he's going he's going to get matched up most of the time right here with an edge player. So being able to get an edge player going downfield right here, getting seamed, and I believe the choice may be at the top of the at the top of the route. You know what I mean? So maybe he can keep it seamed, or maybe he can post that bad boy. So perhaps a seam post from a running back but that's just a lot of space for somebody to try to um get somebody on especially if you do this on a call blitz and you do get it isolated on an edge player who's going to be able to stop deandre swift on something like this all right pay attention so look he does it's a it's a, it's a blitz so a fabricated pressure right here you already know you got a crosser coming right here from uh philip dorsett one of the fastest human beings period you got shallow crosser coming right here, but this is going to be your choice because look at all this space and, and look where it's going. It's a vertical route. <laughs> the edge player can't do nothing about it. Boom, he hits him quick with it too. Now look, you give that man the ball in that much space, this has to be a touchdown, man. Yep, and it is. <laughs> you cannot play with running backs like that in space. Those are the guys I love run after the catch guys, and you know you're going to get that from a running back. So it's a little bit different than a lot of receivers don't understand run after the catch. But running backs, yeah, give me that all day. All right, here we are in I formation, uh, 22 personnel again, two backs, two tight ends, um, single safety here to the field side. So you're going to have that same kind of thing open up with the boot, the boot look coming this way. And you're going to have that play action. But this time, your man right here, Gus Edwards, he's like 6'2", 230. Instead of him taking a wide a wide angle this way for like an angle route, you'll see he keeps it tighter to the line of scrimmage and then kind of gets, I'm sorry, kind of gets seamed right here. And then I believe that there's an area of void in the area of the zone he's probably taught to sit down. So check it out. Get it? Boot action right there plant now look at your man getting seamed right here he's getting up right here on the seam hitch 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 
and get them out in space. And that's a big boy, 6230. That's your boy Macintosh or somebody like that. Funny that probably could have been Macintosh in this particular system or this particular team, but uh, UGA stole that boy. Same play from the bird's eye view. Boom. Hit the play action. Look, there's only one other place he wants to go, I believe. This will be a backside vertical route right here. You see him checking it out. But this looks to be the primary, especially when you can catch a weak side linebacker um, in coverage, even on a big running back like that. So he just hitches it open. Now look at this. Look at this right here. So this is where you got to have a good quarterback who's able to see that. That's a touchdown. I wouldn't even be worrying about this. Um, a guy like the general would see this. You guys can talk shit about the general all you want. He'll see something like this, man. And that bad boy will be launched right here because that is a straight touchdown. That is a, a shot play. That's a shot play, man. Let's go back on that bad boy. Run it all the way through. Man, coverage takes the safer route right there. Difference between a touchdown and a first down. Damn. I know Coley was mad about that in the in the run back. All right, here we go hitting on a deep wheel. Doesn't need much explanation, but you can see this bad boy right there. They always try to catch you in that man coverage. And that's a pretty deep wheel route right there, man. That's that's pretty explosive. That's an explosive gainer off of a wheel route through the air. It wasn't like he wheeled him and hit him real quick. Uh, he let the ball travel through the air and let the running back run under him. So that's some pretty good stuff. Check this out. Halfback motion, sprint, flat, sprint to the flat. Check it out. Boom. Put him in motion. Sprint him out to the flat. He should have hit him earlier. He hit him too late. All right, this may be the last one right here. I uh, would see kind of a traffic release from Duke Johnson right here. I believe this may be um, a part of that bullets concept, but he's taking the traffic release instead of your um, normal uh, circle release that you would get from a running back. Traffic release. So maybe, well, no, you can't release like that on a traffic, but this is still a wheel route. You can see by the angle he's taking right here. Got him matched up once again on the edge player. Boom, the pressure got to him. So he wasn't able to keep that bad boy up in the air. But as you can see, man, he has a ton of different ways to get the um, running back the ball. I'll probably do a, do a second version of this um, later on in the offseason um, just to really drive it home. But right then and there, man, that's the, some of the stuff you didn't see from Chaney. That's not Chaney's thing. I think Chaney comes from a different background. Being that those he, he came from a legit spread background, maybe mid-distance to quick game stuff will be Chaney's thing where when you're coming out of more of a pro style system, even though Chaney developed into a pro guy, that wasn't his background. Um, Coach Cody comes from Jimbo Fisher, which is pro style. Um, Jimbo varied his approach a little bit later on to kind of um, get with the times, I would say. But even if you see his Texas A&M stuff, very much pro style, under center a lot. Uh, so you see the same thing from Coley. He's very much a, a variation of my boy, Jimbo Fisher. So uh, that that can definitely be a good thing, man. Don't ever take something being different as being better, though. It's just different. There's just a bunch of different ways to play football, and some people don't like to hit the running back. So um, Chaney wasn't a big screen guy, but he had other stuff that he would do that a lot of other people would not do, you know. So we'll see about that for sure but i'll be definitely oscillating back between that and then keep going over these games and seeing these different run concepts and i'll keep leaving on keep leaning on coach coley himself man uh, i got a lot of stuff playing for coach coley just because he's somebody that i've known for a long time and somebody that i've known about for a long time coming on coming from under that jimbo fisher thing man so maybe i should cover jimbo fisher and coach coley because i know Jimbo, I know Coach Cody is still going to be looking at some of the stuff that Jimbo is going to be doing. So you'll see a lot of that Texas A&M pop stuff pop up too, which is ironic with Georgia playing Texas A&M this season as well. But you know what it is, man. I appreciate you guys out there. This is Patreon exclusive content. Make sure you never share Patreon exclusive content because I have to come by and you know what I'm saying and bruise, and bruise and swell you up like seafood or something like that. And also. If you see Patreon exclusive content, watch it on the Patreon. Do not watch it on YouTube and thumbs up and, and comment on it or anything like that because it's not meant for YouTube. It's an unlisted content. So you start doing stuff like that, you never know, man. You could get that bad boy out in the ethers because this is 
what you guys pay for and it's Patreon exclusive. All right. But with that being said, man, it's your boy Murph, the underground king, and I am out. Peace.